you have frozen don't know if you can hear me Well, hello, 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 EastEnders fans, and welcome to another episode of Albert Square After Dark, your weekly EastEnders podcast. This week, discussing the episodes broadcast on the BBC and Brickbox uh, from the 24th to the 27th of April, 2023. How are you all doing? You all well? Marvellous. Um, if you're not, then I can't I can't do anything about it. I'm sorry if you said, no, I'm not all right. I can't do a lot about it. But if you are good, marvellous. My name's Rob. Nice to see you. Uh, and joining me, as per usual, is this delightful lady. It's Re. Hello, Re. How are you this week? Hello, Rob. I'm good, thank you. Uh, could be a bit better there. Well, my, uh, I've just finished getting abused by my daughter this week who's learned how to slap mummy across the face <laughs> and also push me at the same time. Not just a little wow. slap, a full-on so push, so yeah. Oh, she's going to be good in the pubs when she gets older, I isn't just, she? I just thought that when I said so it. This you is... care? Yeah, yeah, this is yeah. it. You, you know, you this is because you work in a bar. I don't think that's too much of a too much of a like a big reveal about you because obviously, well, other than being on maternity leave, but yeah, 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 yeah. But so you're you've just trained your daughters to be to be like that is in, so true. She's ready yeah. for it, isn't she? She's ready mm. for it. She's going to take yeah. over from you. Yeah, I bless know. her. Um, I mean, to be fair, your daughter is 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 funny. I like Amira a lot. <laughs> when I the first time I ever met, I've only met Amira once. Uh, and she uh, is like, she's only just turned one, uh, and she absolutely hated me. <laughs> Could not stand Rob. Could not cried stand her me. eyes out. Could not until cried last, the last pretty she much. Saw me. Yeah, <laughs> cried the second that she saw me. Did not stop crying till I left. <laughs> Frankly, your daughter's a massive homophobe. That's all I he can say. He kept saying that. Well, she's not got a problem it. with anyone, any other gay people. She's met Rob. Just saying. Mm. So. How many gay people have you introduced? Why are you introducing me to? The, why are you introducing your babies to the gay people and not me? I believe kind of you are. are you? I'm a single have I been for years. Third. You're at least a third that she's met. So well, maybe she just doesn't like people with glasses. Maybe that's it. Who and mummy wears glasses. Anyway, Rob, I think it may anyway. have been a little bit personal. Not <laughs> I think it was. I mean, her are going to beep when we get older. Wait till. Yeah, it's a good job that she didn't learn to hit when she met me, wasn't it? Otherwise, I'd be yeah, black it and blue. is. To be fair, Ooh. black and blue. Right then, ladies and gents, before we start this week, uh, we want to send a massive congratulations to everybody who ran for Babs Army this week. Um, they only You can still donate if you type yes, Babs you Army can. into Google. Their donation page is still open. Um, they were aiming for 50k and they've so far gone over 65,000. So well wow. done to everybody that was involved in that. Obviously, yeah. that was um, in memory of Barbara Windsor, raising yeah. money for the Alzheimer's Society. Uh, and they've done an absolutely incredible job. Uh, uh, cast members, Heather Peace, uh, Lacey Turner, uh, Adam Woodjack was there. Natalie uh, Tanya Cassidy. Franks, Natalie yeah. Cassidy. Um, just all of you turned up and did an amazing job. So from us, congratulations. And we'll be sure to donate as well. So well yeah. done. Now then, Re, we have had yes. quite a week in EastEnders this week. Quite the week. Quite a week? I don't even know where we're meant to start, Rob. Where will we begin? Let's find out. So let's get talking about this week's EastEnders. So, many big stories this week, but we are going to start with uh, Keanu's story. Uh, now, Bernie and Karen have been to Roland's christening, and it inspires Keanu to uh, get how will be christened. So he goes to Sharon and says, right, that's it, we're doing this. We are going to have the, the event of the year. Albie's going to be christened, and I'm going to pay for everything. Now, why, why did you say this? Because I don't know how much christenings cost, but I guess they're expensive, I would guess. I would guess so, they're too. Just I so mean, you know, by the way, Rob, um, <laughs> this is the... This is the second take of this because Rob just yeah. asked me if I'd had my daughter christened, and I said yeah. no, Rob. I was brought up Muslim, so anyway, yeah, and I so I don't have any dissolved. idea how much christening. I just cost. no, I Rob. Just, no. I mean, that was me trying to, you know, <laughs> appear more woke than I am by stopping it, but clearly not. <laughs> so, and I've known Ree fifteen years, but my only excuse is that I was up at half four this morning and I forgot everything. <laughs> And he had to retake it because he swore had to so much. It. When I but said now it. I wish I hadn't bothered because Reese just revealed it all. <laughs> yeah. And frankly, and this well, is just I revenge too, because Come I on. and it's just revenge because I keep sticking bloopers of her at the front of the video. So exactly. there we are then. There we are then. Um, right. So, um, so I don't know why he said this. Expensive. Though, because Not expensive, very right? Expensive. Yeah. So um, 
Keanu is now basically now going around the square, like trying to kind of get work, and he does find some cash work in hand or the whatever, cash yeah. in hand stuff, yeah, all that kind of thing. Um, but something quite uh, exciting happened this week. So Sharon and Keanu meet uh, a vicar in the pub. They it's do. not just any. It's not just any vicary. It's mm. not just any vicar. It's not. This is Duncan Boyd, who mm-hmm. is a very very old very flame same. of Sharon's. Not he's not very very old, but in terms of Sharon's flames, he's yes. you know he's way back in the annuals of EastEnders. Mm. Um, now I have to be honest, I don't know a huge amount about Duncan Boyd. Um, if this was Warford Weekly, Alex would be giving us a massive monologue right now about Alex, about uh, Duncan Boyd because Alex is much more au fait with the classic, classic era yeah. of these than I am. Um, but needless to say, him and Sharon certainly had a history. They were at one point engaged. Yeah. Den wasn't a mil- Den wasn't a massive fan. <laughs> no. You know, because uh, you can't imagine a vic a priest and Den Watts getting on all that well, really, can you? To be fair. Yeah. No. Um, but he agrees uh, to do the christening, and because it's EastEnders, uh, they have to do this next week because they've decided that this needs to be done. Right, we're going to do it next week. So, well, so- actually, what struck me as funny about that is they said, "Oh, we've not got anything on next week, Bank Holiday Monday." So, yeah, yeah. So, oh, look, I've just found the space. I had a cancellation so on Bank Holiday Monday. Of course, you have. Yep. I mean, I can't wait to see you next week, though, because I've seen Sharon's outfit. They've released some promo pictures for Ooh. really nice family photos of kind of Sharon, oh, yeah, Albie, seen that one, yeah. uh, you know, and Sharon looks like she's got a beautiful plate on her head. I can't wait to see <laughs> that in action. It's great. Um, so that is all arranged. And obviously yeah. Sharon keeps kind of saying things like, well, Linda's got the champagne in, so that's going to need paying because he's offered to pay for everything. And Sharon being a modern woman has gone, yeah, right, that's absolutely fine. You pay for absolutely everything. I have no problems with that whatsoever. So... Keanu's going around the square, like as we said, looking for extra work. Uh, he goes to Phil, and Phil says, well, you can take that. You can help Zach with that delivery. I've got nothing else for you. Uh, obviously, nothing going in the Vic. And eventually, he lands on Ravi's door. Now, yes. Ravi, as we know, has been up to some dodgy dealings. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Keanu gets wind of this from Zach, I think. And yeah. uh, basically says to Ravi, yeah, I, I, have you got any work? Any, any wink, work? Wink, 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 yeah. wink, wink. Uh, <laughs> Ravi's kind of like, uh, right, okay. Well, if you're serious about this, there's a delivery in inverted commas delivery, com- yes. coming in tomorrow. It's coming in. So if you uh, can take care of my delivery, mm. then uh, then we'll talk about giving you some some, some extra work. Um, so this delivery arrives, uh, complete with apparently a guy who claims to be DS Giles. Oh yes, DS Giles. DS Giles, who is basically kind of good. I mean, this delivery, by the way, it turns up on the square. Now, presumably the idea here was for it to just look as though it was just like an, al- an alcohol yeah, sort stock of delivery, whatever, yeah. normal stock delivery. Yeah. Um, but DS Giles kind of wanders up and says, uh, what's in your boxes then? Uh, I'm a policeman. Mm-hmm. So uh, what's in your boxes, Keanu? And what, you know, what's going on there? And Keanu, to his credit, is, is all the sort of like, uh, you need a warrant before you start asking me any questions. Which, I, if, to be fair, if that was a, bit, it was a real policeman, I think that would have immediately kind of made suspicion even higher. Uh, no, I won't show you what's in these boxes. Thank yeah, you very much. potentially. Yeah. You can go and get your warrant. Although, started. having said that, I think I'd have my back up a bit if a policeman just turned up and went, what's in your box? And it was legit. Yeah. I'd be like, really? Why are you asking me that? Well, so, I'd, I'd I know just shut the boxes and said uh, bottles, but you know, yeah. I'm uh, clearly well, then much if more Laura Biden. Mm, yeah, well, I'm a much more a Laura Biden citizen than you, Ray. So, you know, who knows? Who knows? Are you? Since when? <laughs> not, not since uni, let me tell you. Um, <laughs> so, Ravi uh, and Keanu are trying to unload this delivery later, and DS yeah. Giles returns, mm. and, it's, and his name isn't DS Giles. This, no. ladies and gentlemen, is Christoph. Who we have been seeing Ravi chatting to on the phone. Now it, tra- it transpires that Ravi and Christoph have never actually met before because Ravi's like, Oh, well, you Christoph? Yeah, we don't. I, I've talked to you on the phone, didn't, re- didn't know who you were. Yeah. Um, Christos, sorry, not Christoph. Christoph. I thought that when you said it, I know like, Oh, did I mishear it? Oh, correct me, Ray. No, quick, feel free well, to correct I didn't. me. Ray. I weren't sure myself. You do you normally when the, cameras are, when the cameras aren't <laughs> on, you can't stop correcting me, <laughs> can you? Um, so. So Christos is kind of like, yeah, well, this is going well. So, uh, yeah, I've got uh, more of the got another job tonight. for two blokes. Got another job for you, and you, uh, your uh, friend here, dealt with me very well. So we'll uh, we'll take some more of this. Thank you very much. Uh, and so on the second delivery, Keanu actually she drops a box, opens the box. Now, me and you have had a conversation about this before it started. <laughs> we did. He finds, yeah. he finds some weed. 
in the yeah, box, right? Okay, a big bag of weed, mm-hmm. uh, and then Ravi sort of goes, "Oh, yeah, what's a bit of weed? Who cares? Like, it's fine. Yeah, it's mm. no big issue." Um, puts it back in the box. He has a look in the box. Now, I thought that Ravi sort of looked in the box and found something else because his face was a little bit thirsty. Yeah, he looked very shocked. He did. Yeah. So I thought that, that because he later then he he meets Christos later in the square to say like, "Oh, Keanu's a bit dodgy. He's getting he's getting a bit kind of wimpy about the fact that yeah. there's drugs in these boxes." Yeah. Christos tells him to kind of keep Keanu in line, which doesn't bode well for Keanu whatsoever. No. Um, but Ravi says, you didn't tell me we were shifting powder. Now, yeah. I thought that means, I thought that meant that he, when he looked in the box, he also saw, as well as the weed, like cocaine or something like that. Yeah. You would think that because surely nobody calls nobody. something like weed powder. Like That's common nobody knowledge, right? Nobody on God's green earth has ever called weed powder. Unless no. it's like some old slang term that nobody's used for centuries. It's some cockney term or something. Is it I don't term? know. I no, don't, I'm surely sure, not. No, it can't be. It can't well, be. Well, then, and then when he goes to the Vic later and speaks to Keanu, he says, like, oh, it's all right, isn't it? Money you get from shifting weed. So it's not like he says yeah, there's so he anything get... further there. Yeah. So I think maybe he saw something else in the box. So, uh, yeah, this is why you were and, saying, yeah. And, and it's just sort of leading Keanu to think it's only weed. It's just so. Weed. Yeah. It, yeah, it's just weed. Don't worry about it. It's only weed. It's only a class yeah, B, bad. I think. Yeah, it's it, it a class drug. B now. Weed. Yeah, yeah. It's not even a drug. It's only a plant. Deal with it. Jean grew a whole like forest full in a in a shed. Yeah. No one, nothing happened to her. Yeah, really. exactly. So uh, yeah, it's all good. Um, so and obviously the the weekends were sort of Keanu looking all sort of worried about the fact. Mm. Right. So I'm now pushing drugs. That's brilliant. Just to pay for this christening. Not a good idea. <laughs> don't Shall think God would approve of that, Keanu. God, would, do, go. God would be furious at this. So where do you think this is going? This doesn't bode well. We finally found something out about what is actually going on with Ravi and this Christos mm-hmm. that he's, kept, he's been constantly on the phone to. Because this is the guy yeah. that he was saying, uh, it's all right, I've got, I've got an informant. I've, you know, And he was hassling him to kind of get more information mm-hmm. out of Denise. We actually met this guy now. Um, what do you think? Where is Where do you reckon this is going to go? I don't know about immediate. Mm. But this looks like a bit of a setup for Christmas Day. Can't stop thinking about Christmas Day now. All time, like everything, everything's going to lead to everything's leading to Christmas mm-hmm. Day this year. Isn't yeah. It? This so is now we've got thing. Keanu and Ravi linked, which means that a few more of the women are now linked. Mm. So now we're we supposed to think it could be Keanu on the floor. I mean, not a huge amount was, was like not a huge amount was really focused on the six storyline this week. It was yeah. more like kind of I was. I think that was a little hint at it there. Well, this is what I mean. As far as we know, not mm. a lot was discussed about the six this week. But yeah. I um, did put a poll out on some of our socials asking at this stage, who do people believe the killer is, and who do people yeah. believe the victim is? Uh, top of the poll at the moment was Suki. Mm-hmm. But you can and you can kind of see why out of all of them, maybe Suki feels well, the most likely last week. to. Well, yeah. yeah, based on last mm-hmm. week, I and mean, it, it still seems clear at this point that even Nish or Ravi is going to be on the floor on Christmas Day, most likely Nish. So mm-hmm. I mean, but I think people are still at this point completely utterly clueless and are thinking what they're supposed to be thinking. You yeah. know, it's we haven't been given a huge amount of information yet. We've still got all these months left to come. There's a lot more stories to come before we hey, get it could to be Christmas Christos. Day. It could be Christos. I'd be disappointed if it was Christos, unless he turns yeah. into an absolute like full on character over the next few months. Could be shift to shift. Could be Shifty Shiv. You are obsessed <laughs> with the idea of it being Shifty Shiv. It could be Ben. could be anybody. <laughs> it won't be Ben. Trust me, it won't be Ben. Um, I, I genuinely saw a load of theories online about it being Ben on the floor this week. Really? Yeah, genuinely. Like, no, well, this is the thing. That. I, they it wouldn't would. do that. But I see, you know, I've seen people guessing that it was Phil. I've seen people guessing it was Ben. I've seen people guessing it was Eve, despite the fact that, the, that Sharon specifically said, he. said he's dead. But, you know, don't do that. Um, so we'll have to wait and see how this goes, but I don't think this is going to go well for Keanu. I don't think Ravi really has Keanu's best interests at heart here, so it's not looking well for Ravi. It's, it's not, not looking well for Keanu. Keanu. Yeah, so uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens mm-hmm. with the weed slash powder in uh, next week's episodes. Okay then, so we're moving on to moving on. We are moving on to Zach now. Uh, Zach had quite the week this week. Um, so at the start of the week, all is well. He is kind of feeling optimistic because he's spoken to Sharon and Martin. He's told he's told them everything about his diagnosis of HIV, and all is well with him. He's quite happy, and he's wanting Whitney to move in with him. He's kind of he goes to Ravi and asks him for a loan because mm-hmm. uh, him and Ravi have become quite close recently. But to put a pin in that. Uh, and he, he asks uh, Ravi for this loan so that he can, oh, yeah. him and Whitney can move into a flat together. Yeah. Uh, now he goes to Whitney 
and sort of says, right, so yeah, this is this is the money. And I think he's kind of just expecting Whitney to kind of go, yeah, that's a great idea, let's, let's go. Yeah. And kind of forgetting about the fact that Whitney really isn't ready to sort of kind of be yeah. all upheaved and kind of move into a new place. She quite likes living in the house that she's in. Mm-hmm. And she basically just says to him, all right, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm not ready yet. Me and you are fine, but I am but I am not ready. And he's kind of gutted about that. I really liked this, by the way, with Whitney, mm-hmm. because I think it's kind of been... Not brushed under the carpet, but not mentioned as much, you know, than when he was in Beach. Yeah. So it were a nice little reminder that actually, you know, I know it's that a, she she still process. gave birth. She still gave birth, didn't she? So her yeah. body's still recovering from being pregnant and all, all of that mm. kind of thing. So it's completely fair that she's not ready to move out. I don't think anyone, yeah. any woman would. Well, some might, but, you know, it fits yeah. for Whitney that it's not the right time for her right now. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Um. So... Zach's kind of gutted about uh, Whitney's decision to buy that, but he, I think he understands, but he's, yeah, but he's pretty sad about it. Um, mm. Meanwhile, obviously, the boxing match is still go- is going on. Yeah. Uh, now, we, we should talk more about the boxing match when we get to the Ben story, but mm-hmm. Zach has basically refused to fight Ben because of the, you know, because of the blood test stuff. And he just want to, ble- you know, all the, all that yeah. stuff. Um, and after what goes on at the boxing match, which we should discuss shortly, um, ben is full of gusto and full of, of well, he's got his, well, he's got his own problems as Ben always does, and um, which which may sound disparaging compared to considering what we uh, what we discover about Ben, but we'll talk about it. We will talk okay. about it. Um, and Ben is, I mean, Ben is horrible at this moment. You know, Ben is kind of like, oh, you're a coward. It's no good job you weren't going to be a dad. You'd have been rubbish at it. Why would anyone say something like that? Why would anybody anyway? say? It's, 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 it's just Ben, isn't it? It's just Ben mm. all over. Um, uh, so Zach kind of in a fit of anger kind of revealed, oh, actually, I've got HIV to the whole pub. Now, it, you know, the reveal itself may be a little bit contrived, you know, sort of. <sighs> it's it's kind of one of those a tad contrived it was sort of mm. you know one of those kind of shouty moments like oh as, as happens yeah. so often in soap where apparently someone is pushed to the brink where they have yeah. to like scream yeah. out their secret um but that happened and then we kind of go into the next episode which is sort of the reaction to that yes now oh, i have to I, um, what did you think of this of of this episode <sighs> The same as you, judging by your shoo, 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 in about it. it was, <laughs> is that what I do, is it? Just shake yeah, my hands from head shoo, from side shoo, to side like a Thunderbird doll. <laughs> <laughs> I think it could have been done better. I think, okay. I think, obviously, nothing against the actors. They worked with what they were given. Um, it just all felt a little bit contrived, like you said. Well, I think the reaction episode... I mean, yeah, obviously, yeah. The, the, the lead the up to... The lead up to the announcement felt kind of wrong, kind of felt a bit mm. wrong just because Ben was being unreasonably unreasonable. Uh, and then sort of the explosion that Zach kind of gave from there. Um, the reaction, I th- the, th- the thing is with that episode, I think what I was wanting from it, do you remember the episode where um, it was ba- where Ruby's consent story? Where yeah. the, basically the whole pub was discussing it. It was it was all set in the pub. It was oh, all set yeah, in the bit. that was really good. It yeah, was going yeah. along. Yeah, I was hoping for something along those sorts of lines. Yeah, what you're right. Got, that would have been. Mm. That yeah, I mean, the thing is, what we got, I think, was an episode that was talking to the people that needed to learn that lesson. Now, as I'm, as me and you, are not the sort of people that need to know. You know that you don't have to. We're educated to, on you, such things. You know, yeah. You know, well, you know, we kind of we kind of know some pretty basic stuff about it. Unlike yeah, you know true. the likes of Harvey, apparently the likes of Karen, apparently the likes of Mitch, and apparently the likes of Ravi. Um, Ravi was so out of character to react like that. By the way, do you think so? Yeah, very much so. Very. I thought Nish may react like that, and it'd be a bit more believable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But for Ravi to have reacted like that, no, it didn't seem very convinced. It didn't seem I mean, in character. No. I mean, the interesting thing with Ravi's reaction was um, the way that the kind of so he co- he goes back to the he he basically says to Zach, uh, right, you need to take a few days off. Uh, what all the customers about, think? Because what the customers think, he's kind of worried about the fact that Zach might have tra- might sort of transmit it via the food that he's made because he you know all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and he and he goes back to the restaurant, and sort of madly cleaning and throwing all the food that Zach might have prepared or anything kind of in the kitchen. It's Nugget touched. comes in and goes, uh, "What are you doing?" Uh, and Ravi kind of explains and says what he's doing, and Nugget 
I, Nugget sort of looks on his phone, and I think the idea there was to say that well, a fifteen-year-old can look on their phone, can and literally get some Google it, base, can literally yeah. Google it, and find some pretty basic facts about mm. it that this guy clearly does not know about. So I got what they were trying to do with that scene, but I thought that everything leading up to it was a little bit on the nose, sort of with the comments and the way that it was all kind of played. I mean, I don't get me wrong, I it's its heart was in the right place. I know what it was yes. trying to do, but I think because. Same, yeah. I think I was just hoping for something a little bit deeper than what we got, rather than I sort agree. Of like surf, just like the surface level of you know yeah. ignorant comment, and then you know sort of Felix arguing with people and Zach arguing with people. It, it, I, I know what they were trying to do. Yes. His heart was in the right place. I think yeah. it was just a little bit sort of on the nose for and me. And it's been an important storyline well. again, you know, yeah. showing that you know a person like Zach or any any person yeah. for that matter yeah. could yeah. end up exactly. with HIV in this situation, but. It's, yeah. yeah, I know what you're saying. It just didn't work. And I feel like we've had such a big build up, and all mm. of these reveals have just not, they've just not hit like the build up should have. I don't know how to, I mean, I think a bit better. But I yeah. think because of the, I think because of the era that we're in at the moment, I think yeah. I was sort of expecting something a lot bigger in terms of yeah do you know what i mean rather than yeah. what we, like i say mm-hmm. there was nothing necessarily wrong with what we got but it was just all a bit sort of like i say just a bit on the nose a little bit pam- like as if yeah. the characters were just sort of reciting stuff that they've seen on the internet or sit or you know the most common phrases right. that people say yeah, like, when they're in like, situation. oh no i did not know that well, that meant i did not know that zach was our gay man well, funnily enough, I can sort of understand it from Harvey because it's been yeah, established be... before that Harvey is yeah. a dinosaur. You know, yeah, Mitch, not so room. much because, you know, I was yeah. kind of disappointed by Mitch. I was very disappointed with Karen's reaction, I have to say, because I feel like Karen did not need to be that, did not need to be that position. They do this with I Karen think... sometimes, don't they? This is what I mean. Yeah, yeah, Karen is one of those characters where I think that she needs, um, she needed to have been the more sort of sensible one in that in one. Yeah, now, maybe she could it. have been the one who explained to Mitch and Harvey. Actually, I don't think it works like that, you know. Yeah, if, she even if she could have been you know, there, I wouldn't, ex- said it, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't expect Karen to sort of kind of come out with all the reasons as to why they're no. wrong, as to why they're ignorant. But I think that Karen, I would have liked Karen to have been a slightly more sensible one than the two yeah. dinosaur men. Because I think yeah. it would have helped Karen's character a little bit rather than just sort of this... Because Karen very often gets portrayed as sort of this basic sort of chavvy woman who is so so low down in the denominating sort of. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah, I was yeah. a little bit disappointed that they chose to go yeah, that I direction, with Karen. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree. That said, there was some nice stuff in there. I mean, I tell you what, it did do was give uh, Felix probably his biggest scenes that he's had in the show so far. Yeah, he's um, not really done much. Other than that, no. recently, has he? He's just been kind of in the background of stuff. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, Gave there was a kind something. of. Yeah, I mean, there was a kind of nice moment in the calf when he was, him and Zach were talking, and he was talking about his own past, sort of saying his yeah. words, I was a black queer kid growing up See, in London. So he's, he's had those problems. But... Was that not a nicer way for him to deliver the information? Because when he was in the Queen Vicky, he was very shouty, which I understand as well. In, it was emotional, wasn't it? Yeah. But it, I think it. Would be nice. I don't know. It could. It could have just been. Calm yeah, I mean, had a normal well, conversation with. Well, I think the maybe. inclination was that Felix has sort of taken a lot of bullying when when he was a kid growing up. So I think yeah, he of course, sort of yeah. felt it got vibes of that from it. So it kind of riled him up a bit. I think was, was yeah. The vibe it was going okay, for. fair point. I mean, you know, like I said, I mean, you know, it sounds like we've been fairly critical of it. Like we said, his the heart, the episode's heart was completely in the right place. Oh, and totally. It gave, yeah, yeah. And it gave the message across that needed to be done. Yeah. Um. But I just, like I say, I think because we didn't need to be educated on it, and I think some other viewers didn't, a lot of viewers won't have needed to be educated on it, but it was mm-hmm. talking to that smaller majority that definitely do need to be educated on yeah. it. Because, you know, at the end of the day, all of the things that were said in the episode still get said today. You know, it's, it's I said this last week, but, you know, think of a reaction when this, when the HIV storyline mm-hmm. was announced. Um, oh, that's, that's ridiculous. Zach isn't gay. And a lot of that, you know, so it's, yeah. it does need saying some of this. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, don't, I thought everyone was good during it. You know, James James Farrow is a great actor. Oh this yeah, yeah. Great, this has been a great storyline for him. Um, mm-hmm. And obviously, moving on from here, you know, by the end of the episode, people are sort of sorry for it, sorry for their ignorance. Ravi comes across and says, "Look, I'm sorry, I was an idiot. I've got a lot yeah. of stuff to learn. Please tell me you'll come back to the restaurant." You know, so that was that was nice. Um, 
And he's got the support of his mates around him. Sharon at one point was ready to take on absolutely anybody that said a single word about it, quite like that. Um, and he obviously had Martin and Felix oh, and Chelsea yeah. there on his side. Yeah. So, you know, there was some nice there was some nice stuff in there, maybe just a little bit too on the nose for me at times yeah. personally, I, I would say, you know. Mm-hmm. Um but uh, yeah, so the reaction the reaction is mixed. Uh, Robbie fires him, and then tr- and then it's all good with him again. And yeah, that was ba- and that was basically it. So I think Zach has um, a bit of a long road ahead. This is sort of the beginning of it. What I did like was the moment when Felix turned around to him and said, "You're going to have to do this again and again and again, and you're going yeah, to yeah, he did, yeah, you're going to meet this reaction again and again and again. Mm-hmm. This is sort of the new normal for you now, which yeah. was quite nice. I thought I thought that was quite kind of a sobering thought for Zach. Yeah, yeah, because obviously it's all very well telling. I thought your the pep talk from this. Felix and Chelsea was really good, actually. In the yeah, that scene in the cafe was nice. That was probably yeah. the best part of it all, actually. Yeah, yeah, because it was a little bit kind of more subtle, wasn't it? Yeah, <clears throat> in that respect. Yeah. yeah, I know what you mean. Um, but yeah, so obviously Zach's got a long road ahead of him. This isn't the end of it by any stretch of the imagination, no. you know. Um, and it'll be interesting to sort of see where it goes from here. Mm-hmm. I mean, they have made a big thing about the fact that Zach's obviously taking his medication now. So when he becomes when he becomes undetectable, well, presumably when him and Whitney will be able to kind of move their relationship into the to the next yeah. level as well. So it's going to be really interesting, sort of seeing this character go through the whole motions with this and sort of see what a person with hate person with what a person with hiv has to kind of do in their lives to yeah. sort of, to sort of mm-hmm. live the normal life like to have children that they can and, have. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly so it's going to be interesting to sort of move forward so there we go then uh right then next on the agenda ladies and gentlemen we mentioned ben and we shall now be talking about ben in great detail <laughs> Right then, ladies and gents, let's talk Ben Mitchell. Okay, so Ben is intensely training for the boxing match. Um, Callum's exasperated because Ben is kind of really throwing himself into the match and push up the kitchen and what, isn't it? He was refusing his breakfast, making out of that, refusing breakfast and sort of just concentrating on training and everything. Um, Then he goes into the cafe and a police officer arrives to tell Ben that Lewis has been arrested. Uh, and charged with rape and that kind of knocks Ben sideways a little bit um he's kind of stunned dazed and consequently an arsehole to everybody that he comes within a yeah. five mile radius of um which is kind of what Ben does when he's been kind of knocked to kill yeah. like that and so doesn't tell of... doesn't speak to anybody about it of yeah. course like Kathy you know plenty of opportunity for him to tell her yeah what's just been yeah said. I mean I don't know when he would he would be revealing this because uh People find out once uh, he gets to the boxing match, which is, like I say, throwing himself madly into. Lola tries to get hold of him. He's ignoring Lola because he has completely missed one of Lexi's recitals uh, to do this boxing oh, match. Yeah. So yeah. He's, sort, he's sort of kind of losing points there. Um, and Callum arrives at the boxing match and tells him, because he's found out from work, and says in front of Kathy about Lewis. Now Kathy knows. And Ben, again, is just kind of just deflecting it all and sending it all away because he's far more mm-hmm. interested in what's going on in the boxing ring. Um, and the big, this big boxing event is now happening. Phil is the referee, which yes, of course, of course, he is. No and I don't think there at would, all, is there? No, and I don't think this would be allowed. <laughs> in, in no, but you know, it's just sporting. a family friendly event, Rob. Yeah, just a family friendly. But they're doing it so event. seriously that they're doing blood tests. But yeah, as long as still referee. as long as long as Phil's <laughs> family wins, it's yeah, all very yeah. family friendly, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so with Phil as referee, this fight between him and Martin begins and Phil cheats, essentially. Now, we did say last week that if Ben yeah, wins, we did. it's gonna, probably going to be from cheating, which was no faith in Ben whatsoever, but it turns out that was entirely justified. And we also said, oh, he's going to lose and be miserable, but he actually cheated one and was miserable. So there, so, you, there go. you go. I mean, it's... I mean, this all sounds very unfair considering what we later learn about Ben, but let us get there first. Let us get there before you yeah. set up, before the anger. I can feel the anger coming in the comment section already. Just bear with us a minute, all right? We're just going um, with what we know at this stage. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right? Yeah, to yeah. be fair, at this point, we're all sort yeah, of we didn't like, know oh, this. Ben's, yeah. Ben's being Ben. And, yeah. you know, I mean, I'm not surprised by the Phil stuff, by the way, you mm. know, and you could argue, you could argue that because he took his hearing thing out, he didn't hear the bell. So well, that's when he went fair, he wouldn't punch. have if that, he took his he wouldn't have, uh, No, exactly. So, out, yeah. but obviously, obviously, Phil at that point should have said, uh, the bell's rang, son, stop, you lost but and Phil... i'm sorry but everyone else there like you could hear stacy shouting like oh, hey bill's Stacey gone that... bill's gone stacy was having a great time yes you were <laughs> go Stacey... on Martin, have him <laughs> Stacey definitely watches WWF when she's when she's not when oh, the kids yeah. are all in bed, doesn't she? She loves a bit of wrestling. No, but in all seriousness, sorry mm-hmm. to stay on this, but mm. 
there were loads of people there filming on the camera phones, right? Yeah. Surely they've all caught it that he yeah. after the bell. Why has everyone just been like, ah, oh, I'll be right, Ben's won. Uh, yeah. Leave it. yeah, especially when it's climbing they're all... at stake. Yeah. Isn't it? And if I were Martin, I wouldn't let it drop either. Five. No, neither would I. No, God knows that they I. all need it at the minute, you know. I, yeah, this is the big thing, actually, as well. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, the first thing that happens is Martin knocks Ben to the ground. And at that point, Phil should have started counting and ended yeah. the match because Martin yeah. should have won. Mm -hmm. Phil doesn't do that. No, uh, and then eventually Ben counts. gets out, the bell goes, Ben punches Martin when he's not expecting it, lands on the ground, and Phil immediately starts counting it and ends the match and declares Ben the winner. Now, obviously, Ben has got all stuff going on in his head about Lewis, and then they go to the Vic, and Ben is just vile when he's in the Vic, because he starts to, he starts kind of goading Zach, saying that he shouldn't, you know, like we said, uh, mm -hmm. and leads to the, the Zach reveal the in the reveal, pub. Yeah. Now, Ben is, to his credit, sort of immediately sort of like, oh, okay, God, yeah, sorry, didn't really. Tries to that. shake his hand. Tries to yeah. shake his hand, is told to start mm -hmm. off quite rightly, in my opinion. Um, and then sort of just goes off and doesn't really kind of get involved with Zach's story again. No, and no, the no, next episode where Zach once again tells him to start off when he tries to. Oh, yeah, when he apologizes. You can sort of understand, to be fair, because Ben was yeah. an arsehole during that whole thing. Yeah. Um, Lola, meanwhile, because Billy's returned. And oh, yes. Lola has to Lola has to break the news of um, the kind of her diagnosis mm -hmm. and what's going on with and what's going on with her to Billy. Lovely scene between um, Lola, Billy, and Honey as well as yeah. she kind of breaks the news about um, the fact that it's now terminal. I've not even clicked that Honey didn't know, but of course Honey wasn't. I don't know. think I, I don't th no. no, I don't think I realised that Honey didn't know either. But obviously no. she didn't because she was just, she was absolutely shocked and emotional, and it yeah. was a really nicely played scene. That. Well, she obviously um, didn't want to put Honey in a position where she couldn't tell Billy while we were uh, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, um, exactly. But it's kind of enough for Lola to say to Jay, right? You know what? This is. I think it probably hits home when she's telling Billy because she then she's kind of like, right, I need to get Lexi sorted. This is it. I need to prioritize. I need to prioritize Lexi and ask Jay if to, well, tells Jay basically that I, I want you to, I want you to adopt Lexi. Yeah. Now they both, now uh, the thing is they both go around to Ben's, the, to Ben and Callum's flat. The first thing Jay says is, it's all right. It's nothing bad. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing bad. As though he wasn't expecting Ben to completely go apocalyptic with rage mm -hmm. and discover that they were trying to effectively take low tech Lexi off it. Yeah. Um, doesn't react well to it. As you can uh, probably Shocking. imagine. Shocking. He kind of gets all angry and, you know, makes now there was an interesting um interview uh this week with James Farrer who plays that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um and this is where I sometimes wonder about what exactly the writers are doing about Ben and with Ben and how we're supposed to feel about Ben as a character. Because to a lot of people, Ben is quite a, a is, can be quite a frustrating character. He could be quite an exhausting character to watch. It is nothing on Max Bowden's performance because oh, he's no, great no. as Ben. He is um, yeah. He's a great actor, and God knows that he's been given enough sort of really hard material to do, and he does it really, really well. Mm -hmm. But there was an interesting um, thing with um, an interesting interview with James Farrer when he and he's talking about the moment that him and Ben are sort of coming to blows in the bit mm. and leading up to the reveal, and he and he says through Ben's ability to get under people's skin and his selfishness and his ability to think that his problems are bigger than everyone else's problems, Zach flips and ends up announcing his HIV diagnosis. Uh, to the Vic in a moment of impulse. Now, that, in a nutshell, is what annoys me about Ben. Like, his yeah. ability to make his own problems so much bigger than everybody mm -hmm. else's and the fact that he's selfish and, you know, and all that kind of thing. Now, it's all very well for fans of the show to be watching it and say all of that sort of thing because, you know, it's all subjective. But the problem with Ben is that you sometimes wonder if we're meant to be this annoyed with him and whether we're supposed to be kind of feeling really sympathetic towards him. But for an actor... Is who's in the show to kind of say that makes me wonder if what we're feeling about Ben is legitimate because and it's and they and they're okay with us feeling that that way. Maybe that it way. is. Maybe it is supposed to be love hate because obviously Ben has many reasons for being <sighs> the way that he is. I mean, he's had a rough life. We know he's had a rough yeah. life, and it's about yeah. to get rougher, by the way, because another story was. I mean, we'll get to, we'll get to that, but um, so basically. The rest of the story this week is um, Ben gets Richie in. Nice to see Richie. Always nice yeah, to see yeah. Richie. We like Richie. Love Kathy going in and being like, oh, of course you're in. <laughs> yeah, I did like that. You Kathy, did, Kathy did do quite well this week, trying to talk to yeah, Phil and did. talk some sense into Phil, yeah. talk some sense into Ben. Um, and effectively, Ben is trying to find out what, what his rights are. Richie tells him, look, probably this is going to be a private arrangement, so I don't really need to be here. 
Um, and eventually, sort of, Ben goes around to Lola and Jace and says, "All right, look, okay, you can do this, fine, but th- you know, it's gonna it's gonna be a private arrangement and nothing more." Um, and then Kathy and Callum are taken to the Vic, and he goes to the loo. Now, I wasn't sure what was going on here at first because he cu- he kind of comes out of the cubicle, mm-hmm. and then it's the Duff Duff, and it was. Sort I of had like, to rewatch what? that. I rewound yeah. that scene because I was so unsure. I was yeah. like, why? Why is that ended on a duff duff? I don't understand what just happened. Because at first, sort of it, thing, yeah, yeah. So it, like, his face so was wiping wet, his mouth. So he's been sick. Because it has been revealed that a spoiler alert if you haven't seen this, uh, but it has been revealed that uh, Ben is going to go through uh, an eating disorder storyline and specifically yeah. bulimia. Mm-hmm. Now. Uh, it's another very intense emotional story. Rob, for ben. Don't upset people. I'm not trying to upset people. All I'm trying to say, don't do that. All I'm trying to say is, it's an. I mean, it arguably it's a natural progression for everything that Ben has gone through, and yeah. I will learn a lot about about this because at the moment I sort of kind of like I don't get the connection. I'm assuming I know full well that there will be a connection. They will connect this together, and it will make sense. Yeah. Um, but it's just, it's another really intense emotional story for Ben after he's, ju- yeah. after he's just been through, he's been through a year of absolute hell, you know, and, uh, you know, going through the rape and going through the homophobia look, that he was going can through. I, can I say my this. thoughts? Can yeah, I say yeah, my go. Thoughts? Look, Ben's going through a tough time with the Lula stuff. He's yes. then going to be going through a very tough time with the Lola stuff, right? Yes. Could we have given this to somebody else on the, on the show? It's sort of my. Is he not got me. enough going on? Again, that'll probably be the reasoning behind why he's doing it. I yeah. get that, but I he's mean, already got a lot to deal with, and it could mm. be taking the focus away from the fact that he's dealing with the Lewis stuff. Arguably, this is how he's dealing with it. Of course, mm. again, then yeah. taking away attention from the Lola stuff. I mean, he's gonna. That family's going to have so much to deal with. Again, I think I feel like it's going to take away from what Jay's going to be going through and how yeah. they could all be going through it together as a family. But no, then it's going to turn into Ben's troubles because it's all about Ben. Yeah, I mean, Sorry this is the, be, this is the, well, this is the thing, you know, and this is and this is what I mentioned. Um, what James Farrow said in that interview when he was talking mm, about like how Ben yeah. manages to make all his problems about himself, which is kind of makes me wonder if that's what we're supposed to be seeing mm. with Ben. If, and if that's what we're supposed to see in Ben as a character, who, you know, yeah, he's layered, he's frustrating, as all people are in life, and some people are like that in real life, and mm-hmm. soaps are supposed to reflect human beings from real mm-hmm. life. Um, and that doesn't take away from what he's... to take away from this very important story, to be fair. But, it, yeah, that is the, that is the kind of question that immediately came to my mind. Like, why does Ben need this story again? You know, it's a, such an intense, massive story. And Max Baldwin will do an amazing job with it. No, no denying doubt. that whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Of course he will. And the writing will be good for it. And they'll have done all their research. And it will all be marvellous on that front. No issues anywhere else apart from the fact that why does Ben have to have this storyline? Now, what we will presumably discover is why this will happen to Ben. Yeah. And because. Yeah, we can kind of already understand why he might be doing it. It's an area yeah. where he couldn't have a bit of control. Yeah. If it's to do with control. Well, this is the other thing. This is something I have read about this. And it's the fact that there's a, because a few theories on about it. The fact that because Ben had control taken away from him, this is very much sort of it's some in some senses, it's a control thing with this as well. So it, it's a reactionary thing, possibly. Um, but, you know, the reaction to this storyline being announced was very mixed in terms of Max will be great. But does this have to happen to Ben? Has Ben not been through enough? Mm-hmm. to why is this happening to Ben? You know, it's it's yeah. a really kind of contentious thing. And the thing is, there is not a character in EastEnders that garners the reaction that Ben Mitchell gets from a lot of the fan community. He is a very sort of contentious character and a lot can... A, it, it provokes quite a reaction from a lot of different camps. You know, the Balam fans are, you know, stoically kind of supporting Ben, as they should, because that's their favourite character and their favourite relationship, so understand. Can I ask something to Balam fans, oh Rob? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah? Do, no. <laughs> nothing, no. Do you enjoy watching Balam having hardship and constant issues, mm. or would you prefer to watch them being happy? Yeah. Is that an okay but, question to ask? Oh, that's a perfectly okay question because to ask. Because you know then, that is generally the only two things that happen between them constantly. 
it's either yeah, it's up or, or down. There's it's no extremes, in between, isn't it? Yeah. So I mean, what do fans prefer? I mean, the other thing is, of course, that you know, on the, on the side, Callum, Callum kind of tends to get sidelined on a lot of this, and it seems like Callum's role is very much sort of just leading Ben from storyline to storyline in a supportive sense. And it's kind of like you know, kind of give Callum some time in the spotlight on his own. You know, like kind of give. I don't know. It's 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 a tricky one. I it's agree with that. One. Actually, now you've mentioned that, yeah, it's always well, you know, and, you shadows know, really. Isn't it? There yeah. are a lot of characters that don't get, a, you know, have huge gaps between stories, and Benny's not one of those characters. And I don't know. It just. I don't know. I don't know. If this and I can tell you now, this discussion will be quite fiery in the comment section. So we're preparing ourselves for that. And we're not trying to offend anybody, all right? We're just sort of talking about this as we've discovered it. You know, it's all... We don't we don't rehearse these podcasts. We sort of just discuss our thoughts. Have and I said something? Why is Rob apologising so no, much? No, 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 no. no. Trust me, I've got experience with how with, uh, with okay. all the Ben storylines right. and how this kind of can react. Right? Do you know what, Rob? I'm going to say something. I'm I'm quite indifferent to Ben anyway. Like, I think right, he's a okay. complex guy. So He is a complex character, yeah. For me... I don't mind him getting storylines and things, but sometimes any character, whether it's Ben or anyone, when you've had this many in a row, sometimes mm. something's got to give. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that's all we've... I mean, I mean, that's about it, really. But it's just, yeah, we'll see what happens with this. It, Like we've said, it's not like Mac Bowden's not going to do an amazing job out of this. And it's not like they're not going to do the storyline well. No. You know, that's that's irrelevant, but it's just sort of like surely how much more can one character go through i think is, the, is basically the main issue but do let us know in the comment section below he says nervously <laughs> <laughs> let us know what you think let us know your thoughts in your comments and we will and let's keep it civil because we're trying to keep um, it civil. and be nice because i'm still new to this so oh um, yeah i'm i'm an old i'm an old hand of, of oh, the, say what the, you want to rob but don't say yeah say what you like to me that's fine so after that heavy discussion, we are going to move on now to Amy, Jack, Denise, Ricky, and another character that made a bit of a return this week. Oh my goodness, we have much Say to discuss. Say what? Here. Say what? Okay, so uh, the story starts. Amy is um, constantly just trying to get Jack and Denise to talk. She's, you know, she goes to a therapy session, texts Denise, "Can you come to a session?" And it's basically trying to push Jack and Denise together so they actually communicate with one another because that's been one of the sort of one of Amy's sort of biggest kind of triggers is the fact that she thinks that she has broken Jack and Denise up. Yeah. Um, so in this counselling session, the the counsellor suggests that they all go to family therapy because he thinks that that's going to help Amy and that it will give her some it will give her some leeway and give her an outlet and give the whole family an outlet in order to air their problems and hopefully make things better. Um, during all this, of course, is the fact that uh, Amy's mum necklace is broken. And you sort of think, oh, yeah, you can understand it because she's kind of yeah. trying to, you know, grasp whatever sort she of keeps kind it of close to her. That's it. Yeah, keeps it close to her. It got broke. Um, it was broken last week or the week before. Yeah, when she get... smashed the mirror. Yeah. And everything, yeah, 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 yeah. So she's been trying to get that fixed. She yeah. nearly misses the ther the the therapy session because oh, she goes missing to... and Chelsea yeah, finds yeah, her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chelsea finds her. Chelsea's great this week because Chelsea is basically putting away, putting aside her issues with Denise. And is because obviously that is still going on. Her and Denise yeah. are very much still not on good terms at the moment. But she, Chelsea, they'll make up. There, they'll make up. They'll make up. But Chelsea is very adult about all of this, yeah, and, is, she is. and is trying to get um, everything good, and is trying to get Jack and Denise talking again, and persuades Amy and persuades Jack to make this family therapy yeah. thing happen. Yeah. Um, so they go to this family therapy session. I mean, well, let's talk about the big event of this storyline, okay? I mean, it was all great, but they go to the family therapy session, and. A lot of kind of home truths come out. You know, Ricky says that basically reveals how difficult he found Amy self-harming because obviously he was the one oh, that had yeah. to call an ambulance when Amy went too far with the, with her mm -hmm. cutting that time. So that's, re that's really kind of played heavily on his mind and Amy feels guilty about that. Mm -hmm. um, and then Amy reveals, like, you know, she's missing her mum and, you know... She, her, she, and she's a step -mom, mom, she there, says. And a stepmom, right. so she's like, missing those sort of maternal mm -hmm. figures in her life. And the therapist turns around to her and says, OK, so if your mum was here what would you say to her? And then, who shows up in sort of a, an imagination, dreamy sort of sequency thing? And so Roxy Mitchell. <laughs> going to say the same. <laughs> oh, it was so good to see her, wasn't it? It was, it, it was. Roxy? Oh. She, fit, she should be back, let's be honest. I mean, okay, so because you're so new to the podcast, Ray, the Ronnie and Roxy death, what are your thoughts on it? <sighs> Probably... 
one of, if not the worst decision ever in EastEnders history. Correct. For the sake of one dramatic episode, you could have had that dramatic episode and had them still alive at the end. We could have yeah. had them in hospital for two weeks or something. You didn't yeah. need to kill them off. Correct. Absolutely correct. I know now, it's correct. Which is correct. Now, I. <laughs> um, my other question to you is... Ooh. Obviously, it was so lovely to see Roxy this week, and Rita Simons was amazing in the scene, and she obviously found it incredibly emotional. And frankly, I can't blame her for finding it emotional. And Ellie Dad, by the way, is getting better. Is just kind of climbing and climbing she and climbing mm-hmm. as the weeks go on. Like she's yeah. really, really nailing this part at the moment. Um, but and the scene itself was beautiful, you know. Mm-hmm. And they brought up a poem, and this poem scene actually happened. I've shared yes. it on Twitter uh, via somebody I else. I retweeted. I retweeted gorgeous scene with which they referred back to which is a really really nice moment my question to you re is bearing in mind that we both agree that killing ronnie and roxy off was a ridiculous decision that made zero sense would you welcome some form of and it would have to be in all fairness but would you accept some sort of outlandish mad yeah bring them back i don't care take it. aliens yeah. took them whatever yeah, you know i take it yeah, anything, literally. Anything. I mean, I did a poll <laughs> on our on our. You're Twitter. living the polls this week. Well, I know, I know. It's all about <laughs> communication with the fans. Um, and I did a poll this week and asked that exact question: Would you accept? Let me just get this thing up. Would you accept a outlandish plot uh, to bring the sisters back? Now, the reaction to this, the question, the, op- the options I gave was yes, but only Roxy. Yes, mm-hmm. but only Ronnie. Yes, mm-hmm. bring them both back. And no, it would be too daft. Now, um, as we record this on a Thursday, this poll's only been up a few hours. But at the moment, uh, after 153 votes, thank you very much for everyone who's voted. Uh, it's still open for another 18 hours as of right now. Um, yes, but only Roxy got 20%. Yes, but only Ronnie got 1%. Yes, bring them both back got 61%. And no, it would be too daft has 18%. So I feel like, you know, and yes, you can, I, I get it, right? It would be, you know, yeah, they both drowned in the swimming pool. All right, I get it. I don't we care, don't though. Care. I don't we care. don't care. I don't care. It was a ridiculous at Clenners. decision. At Clenners. Yeah, at Clenners. Read that poll, right? We want our sisters back. <laughs> I mean, want don't, we don't care. Don't get me wrong, all right? I get it, all right? I get people who are kind of saying it Rob, would be quite daft. Rob, but... I have a question for you. Yeah, go. I'm going to put you on the spot now. Yeah, You're a writer. It. You're a writer. Yeah. How would you bring them back? Well, for a start off, uh, Ronnie would be uh, would have faked her own death because uh, Carl White's family would have been after her. You know, the guy that she murdered on Perfect. New Year's Eve? Yeah. yeah. And Roxy will have... Uh, basically she wouldn't have been able to deal with like running away from Roxy all this time because they got really close on that last day so basically they decided to fight their own death together and Ronnie uh, by the way was being looked after by Billy who would have been absolutely fine and been, been all in on it there's ways you could do it alright <sighs> yeah see it's doable it's doable he sorted it for you East Enders. there you go let's do it sorted. bring them back bring I them mean back. you know in all seriousness I think a lot of people would be very, very happy to see the sisters back. I understand that it's a difficult position because Sean O'Connor tried his damnedest to make sure that, you know, they definitely appeared dead. And in all honesty, even this scene with Roxy today, as beautiful as it was, kind of very much gave the impression, you know, Roxy basically saying, yeah, yeah, I miss you because I'm dead. You know, it it, did, right, but I, if it was part that. of Amy's imagination, it don't matter. And that's very true. That's very, very true. I mean, let us know in the comments section, Ronnie and Roxy, would you take a ridiculous plot to bring them back? Could you reckon, do you think it should just be only Roxy that comes back or just Ronnie or both of them? Or would you think it would just be too daft for words? Bearing in mind, okay, Kathy, Ian went and identified her body. Mate, I was going to say, we've had more ridiculous things happen. So your your way of bringing them back is pretty plausible. No No more ridiculous, I would say. Oh, dear, dear, dear. But it was so lovely to see Roxy again. It was amazing. I really, yeah, really love that scene. I mean, if that's all we can get for now, Plenners, thank you very much. It was a marvellous yeah, thank scene. thank you. It was great. It was great. It was great. It was great. Um, and it did it did aim me some favours, you know, talking about the story again. Uh, it did aim me a lot of favours, I think, because she kind of kind of got to lay a few ghosts to rest in her own head. I think mm-hmm. a lot. And then in the immediate family circle, I think a lot of home truths helped her. Yeah. So, again, I think this is Amy sort of trying to build herself up again. 
Jack and Denise, meanwhile, are sort of getting on the same page again. So I don't imagine that they're going to be apart for too much longer. No. Um, talking of couples getting back together, within the midst of all this, Kim and Howie got back together. Oh, yeah. Howie just basically kind of went, well, yeah, I love you. So, you know, I won't. And I need to leave your house. Because, so yeah, yeah, because Kim turned around to him and go, well, leave then. Leave. Yeah. All right. So I'm actually... be here. Just leave my house that yeah. you don't have any part of and Patrick and Patrick owns. Go on, get out then. Yeah. Uh, and Howie's like, well, actually, no, I love you. Why would I do that? I'm not going to leave. That would be a ridiculous thing <laughs> so to do. True. Yeah. So yeah. there you go. But they're back together. So fine. That's all fine and dandy. Um, but yeah, please. Do let us know in the comment section all about your thoughts on that Roxy scene and go on. Would you take it? Would you take a mad plot to bring the sisters back? I know I would. Re would. You know, bring it on. Right, ladies and gentlemen, who would you give your gold star to this week, Re? Oh, Rob, you've not even given me a chance to think. I no, should have been thinking. On the spot. Do you know what? I'm never going to be able to do it again. Or oh, maybe Roxy. I will. Roxy. Roxy. Gobby. Hey, Roxy. I mean, I'll give half a star to Amy as well, because Amy was amazing this week. Well, I would, but I gave it last week, so... Well, yeah, yeah. Actress. I mean, there were a lot of tough discussions in the soaps this week, in, in the show this week, and quite a lot of tough discussions for us to sort of cover this week as well. Um, it was a week for me that sort of kind of went like that a little bit. Like, it was, it was a rough week in a lot of ways, but then also the Roxy scene completely nightly saved it. Um, yeah. I await to see where the Ben story is going to go, all right? I'm not closing my mind to it completely. I am just of a sense of just like, oh, really, Ben again? But, you know, bring it on, fine. This is a big issue storyline, that it's a, and it is an important storyline, all right? It's, it's, it's something that needs to be discussed, and I'm sure that there is perfectly legitimate reasons as to why Ben has this story. Um, and the Zach stuff was, was okay, you know? It, it may be a little bit too on the nose for us, but at the end of the day, it got the message across. So nice all's message. Well, all's right well I suppose. Yeah. yeah. Right then, we have a lot of comments to read out. So let's do that right now by going to our socials. So, as I said, I've, I've been going mad on the polls and questionings this week. I'm going mad about it, discovering the joys of social media. Uh, and earlier in the week, I did ask, who at this stage do you think the killer is? And who do you think the victim is? And let us know what your thoughts on that are. And we had a load of comments on Facebook, on Instagram. Re read us a couple of it. Read us a couple of comments. What did you get? We had Linda Stein who said, to be honest, I can't guess at this point. I don't think it'll be who we suspect is the obvious, i.e. Suki or Denise. And then Matt Grogot says, I reckon it'll be Suki killing Nish. Uh, on Instagram, Katzen618 says, thinking Nish, but that's probably too obvious. Louise Holman, Nish gone for good. Cat and Ket, it's going to come blow. It's going to come to blows between Eve and Nish. Um, Ricky says, Suki kills Ravi after finding out he killed Ranveer. Uh, Renaissance Costume says the six haven't killed anyone and someone unexpected did. Ooh. Maybe Vinny kills Nish. Ooh. Um, and then C Star, I'm, I'm now 100% convinced it's none of the six. It's Eve and she's killed Nish. Uh, Stephen Joy's Milk says Chelsea and Ravi get back together. Kirat kills Ravi. And Nancy Hoven, Hand oh, sorry, Nancy Hove Hanshen. Sorry if I said that wrong. I say if I've said that wrong, I've definitely said that wrong. I do Hove Hanshen. Uh, doesn't get you. Uh, it is Nish. Suki did it, or it was an accident. And finally, Team Western, who said, I think it's Ravi dead on Christmas Day. There you go. Uh, and there was also one more comment that I wanted to read because I enjoy the fact that people are going mad for theories and everything. Uh, Ooh, okay. Theresa Robertson on Facebook. Buckle in for this, okay? It's great. It's still too early to tell. The early front runners are Nish or Ravi, especially with the song playing in the new trailer. It specifically has lines, you're a holy fool, all coloured blue, red feet under the floor, you do such damage, how do you manage trying to crawl in back for more? And with one kiss you inspired a fire of devotion that lasts for 20 years, what kind of man loves like this? Pointing to Suki with dress colour change and the number of years matching Nish's prison sentence. I've always favoured Nish from the beginning, but it's possible he's a red herring. They would lose a good villain role if they killed him off. All the colours the women are wearing tied to the amber cufflinks as they are all shades of amber. Whoever it is will be tied to all the women. I love it when EastEnders provokes this sort of reaction from fans. It's great. This is the sort of thing where you have like massive police charts. When Lucy, when, <laughs> yeah. During the Who Killed Lucy stuff, there were so many fans that had it all written down on their walls. I love it when it gets like this. It's marvellous. Um, so thank you for all your comments. Keep sending them in for all the discussions that we we're talking about this week. And you can do that by doing what, Ree? 
You can find us on Facebook on Albert Square After Dark, on Twitter and Instagram, E20 After Dark. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. You can listen to us on Apple and all your favourite podcast sites. Email us at e20afterdarkpodcast at gmail.com. Boom. Thank you very, very much for listening and watching. Don't forget to get involved, as Bree just said. Uh, and we'll be back at the same time next week. Now, the video site that we are using for this is closing down as of tomorrow, as we record this. So it could well be that we have a couple of weeks of just audio. We are trying our best to get a new video streaming site. We've had a few suggestions. Thank you very much for them. Um, but it could well be that we're just on audio next week, but we will keep you updated and we will be trying to get back to video as soon as we possibly can. So until next week, darling viewers and listeners, it's goodbye from me. Goodbye from me. See you next week, guys. Bye. Bye.